Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's bird video. So day 10 will take us to the 18th of September. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have some GFS and ECM ensembles and may run to around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which is going to seem to be the early part of October. Uh, so I'll get on back for you in a second to say about the first video release was our 7 a.m. forecast. Uh, we also uh, released the USA forecast also on Wednesday. Have a look at weather in America. I think we can have storm watch tonight because there is a risk of thunderstorms. Uh, already kicking off actually in the far southwest. More about that in a second. But there is a risk of thunderstorms coming more widespread tonight and into tomorrow as well as we break down this uh, really hot September weather. So uh, more about that a little bit later on. Please like, share, subscribe on all our videos. Thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. Right, we're going to start off with the uh, radar then from uh, the weather outlook. So uh, we've got some very heavy uh, rain in the far southwest. So just into the far southwest of the tip of Wales and also have been pouring down across parts of southwestern England too. This stretches across the Irish Sea in towards Ireland. If we add on the uh, lightning detector, we can see we've got some um, uh, lightning flashing away there uh, to the uh, west and southwest of, uh, of the southwest of Tim of Wales, and also some over across Ireland as well. There is another area of thunderstorm just beginning to move northwards out of northern parts of France, heading in towards the uh, channel. I think these storms could well start to get a little bit more widespread uh, later this afternoon, overnight tonight, and into tomorrow. And uh, more about that in uh, Stormwatch, probably around 7 o'clock this evening. It's a very warm day again out there, away from the southwest, where it has turned cooler. Very, very hot day uh, for uh, for September. So uh, we've got 28 degrees here, flashing away in many lo locations uh, across England and Wales. So uh, valley right up there. Uh, in Anglesey, flashing away at 28 degrees. And in the Midlands, we've got 28 degrees. And down in the southeast corner of Cambridge at 28 degrees. And even into uh, parts of uh, London, we're at 28 degrees there at Heathrow, for example. So 28 widespread at the moment. Another couple of hours worth of heating still to go. Could well lift the temperature to 30 degrees again. This afternoon, that is 86 in Fahrenheit. The heat has pushed northwards as well. So uh, we've got 22 at Tullet Bridge. Uh, we've got 23 at Loch Glasgarnock. Aberdeen is at 23. Those areas again going to warm up further over the next hour or two, probably reaching mid 20s Celsius, which is very, very warm for Scotland in uh, in September. So, uh, yeah, this is a really unusual spell of weather, but this is the last day of it, and uh, after today, the temperature will be starting to cool down. Now, of course, all this is having an effect on the central temperature, so the CT is uh, currently standing at 17.4. That's provisional to yesterday, the 7th of September. That's uh, going on for 3 degrees above average so obviously very hot you know at the moment and that's gonna go up further i'm wondering if that might touch 18 uh tomorrow i don't know if it will probably be just short of that but it didn't be into the upper 17s anyway um after that though it will gradually start to move downwards through the rest of the week into the weekend and on into next week and this is the reason why these are the gfs upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks for london the red line being the 30 year upper air temperature average for london and you can see we're starting off really hot at the moment but pretty much from today tonight onwards the upper air temperatures and indeed it'll be the case surface temperature too are on a downward spiral so by the time we get into the weekend and the beginning of next week we are back down very very close to average it may still be relatively warm particularly so at night but because you know the, the overall temperature is so very high now uh it will start to uh, drop and, and begin to fall away. Uh, into the second half of September, it looks like we keep temperature quite close to maybe a little bit above average. So we're no, certainly nowhere near as hot as it is uh, right now. Uh, and also going to start getting a little bit more unsettled as well, potentially too. So, uh, of course, these precipitation spikes here associated with the breakdown of this hot weather. So so that could be like heavy showers and thunderstorms. And as we go into next week, maybe, you know, some uh, rather unsettled weather uh, beginning to to uh, show its hand, particularly into the second half of September, perhaps. 
a little bit changed him at the moment. It does look as though things might begin to get a little bit more unsettled now uh, through the course of next week. More about that in a moment. Temperature anomalies from the April to 16th of September, significantly warmer than average, as you would expect, given the uh, really hot weather we've got at the moment. And the uh, precipitation anomaly from the 8th to the 16th of September, still largely drier than average across many parts of the country, although the far south and south is actually nearer normal, perhaps just hinting at uh, some slightly more unsettled weather uh, being on the way. Related windflow map from related windflow map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that we are still bringing in this very warm or hot southerly southeasterly wind. Here it comes, but with below pressure down here uh, starting to move uh, cooler air in off the Atlantic, it is that area of low pressure that will eventually push these cooler uh, temperatures in from uh, the west. So temperatures will begin to fall from uh, tomorrow onwards. OK, so let's start going through the generic chart. So we'll start off with the uh, UK Met. Shall I put the webcam back on for this? Why not? There we go. Uh, OK, so this is how the UK Met is looking for Saturday. So by Saturday, that boundary low has moved into the North Sea and we're pulling in cooler air, fresher air from off the Atlantic. It'll still be pleasantly warm in the South, but it's not going to be a big plunge temperature for the South, but certainly lower than the heat growth mode. In the North, actually, it will get quite cool, I think over the uh, weekend in the northern half of the country. Into next week, high pressure reaching in from the northwest. This is a cooler area of high pressure, although this is setting things down through the early part of next week. You know, the, the air coming around, this is cooler from, from a northeasterly sort of direction. Right at the very end, gets us to the middle of next week, midnight, Wednesday, right at the very end, we might be starting to threaten to move like a thundery low up from the south. Uh, so that would lift the temperature up a bit, but would be threatening to bring heavy rain uh, or maybe thunderstorms into southern areas from northern parts of France. Meanwhile, further north, though, Scotland remains under the area of high pressure. Right, it's how the GFS midnight uh, run was looking. So there's that boundary low of the east coast of Scotland on Saturday. That gets out of the way as we go through it into Sunday. And heights begin to rise to our north and west. Although we're bringing in a relatively cool northeasterly flow from off the North Sea, actually. So that probably drags in a lot of cloud again. That's back to the pattern we have at the end of August. Quite a lot of cloud, I think, coming in with that across east areas. And probably quite cool, too. Have got lower pressure over continents. So over the low countries, Germany, uh, pressure is weak. And there's uh, showering outbreaks of uh, rain then. And some of that does maybe start pushing in from the east in the middle part of next week. And meanwhile, further north, high pressure takes over across Scandinavia and ridges down into Scotland. So a lot of dry weather continuing for the northern half of the country. Relatively cool east north east winds in the south southeast could drag in quite a lot of cloud and uh, maybe even some showery rain. There's the precipitation forecast for the middle of next week showing that we have got this line of rain setting up from Germany through the low country into the North Sea and into southern southeast parts of England. That'd be a snow streamer, uh, you know, that'd be significant snow <laughs> if this was winter, but of course it's not, it's uh, only September. Um, go through into the second half of next week again. The high pressure in over Scandinavia, the wind is in from the east and from the north. As well, so particularly England and Wales, relatively cool, probably quite cloudy, and further showers coming and going. And that Scandinavian high takes us right the way up to day 10, which is Saturday, the 18th of September. High pressure over Scandinavia, keeping Scotland, keeping Scotland mostly dry, um, probably relatively warm, although nights could be chilly. For England and Wales, I think it is probably quite cloudy with this east northeasterly wind, and uh, further showery bits and pieces of rain are possible. It is quite a cool air, air mass that we're dragging in with that east. Easterly uh, wind. So, so for next week, the GFS midnight run looking quite a lot cooler, you know, than, than it has done uh, for a few uh, runs. Now, just beyond day 10, we begin to weaken that ridge of high pressure. Uh, uh, low pressure deepens around Iceland. And check this out as we go into the uh, closing uh, segment of the uh, GFS midnight run, which is like days, uh, days 11 to 14 or 15. We get autumn setting in. Here it comes, deepening low pressure in the North Atlantic, sweeping away the high pressure. And um, there is autumn. Uh, by the uh, Friday 24th of September, we are well and truly into gale force winds, heavy rain and low pressure driving in from the Atlantic. That's as far as we go with the GFS midnight run. But, uh, but by the end of it, by two weeks out, GFS midnight run uh, brings us autumn uh, and that's it showing its hand. 
Of course, that's very, very unreliable, but uh, but that's what it's shown today. This is how the very latest run, the 6Z, is looking. Again, that bungee low across east of Scotland, transferring to Norway over weekend with heights rising over country. So it does start to settle down again over weekend into the part of next week. We're probably still a bit showery in the east. The main thing, though, is that we're pulling in a cooler uh, wind from off the North Sea and probably a cloudier wind again uh, as well, particularly for eastern areas. So, of course, off next week, high pressure centres over Scandinavia, so it wins back in from the east. This is not as cool through the middle of next week as the midnight run was, but it's the same sort of idea, still bringing in that east wind and probably bringing quite a bit of cloud to east there, so maybe some showers in the southeastern corner as well. And then up to day 10, uh, again, we weaken that area of high pressure, the Scandinavian high weakens, and uh, lower pressure developing around Iceland and in the North Atlantic, starting to bring rain in from off the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, yeah, here we go again. The 6Z also has the onset of autumn developing uh, as we get into the extended range, low pressure rattling in from off the Atlantic, bringing bouts of rain, strong winds, and significantly, that's a big, change. Well, the rain also is a big change, of course, because it's been so very dry, but also a significant drop in temperature. So both the GFS operations have autumn setting in through the third week of September. We shall see if that verifies or uh, or not. GM looks like this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the special like button. Make sure you're sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. So the GM looks like this. Uh, again, as we go through the weekend, that turf uh, bungee low, moving away to the northeast, heights rising over country. But it's a cooler ridge, this. It's not going to be associated with like the hot temperatures we've got at the moment. So it's still pleasantly warm, but but not you know, not not excessively hot through uh, through the early part of next week. And again, really by day 10, uh, running up towards day 10, it's the same idea with the GEM as the GFS output, with this high pressure, the Scandinavian height is weakening, it's slipping away to the northeast. Lower pressure, you'll see, is developing to the south of Greenland, around Iceland. Could run on another 24 hours. I suspect we will find low pressure deepening in the North Atlantic and starting to bring us our first bouts of the wind and rain that we've had for a very, very long time. We can't go any further than day 10, but it looks like the GEM is trending in the same direction there, doesn't it? And then we've got the uh, ECM also, uh, which looks like this. So there's that bungee low midnight Saturday across the northern half. Jack gets out of way to uh, Scandinavia over the weekend. And pressure rises through the country. We're probably still a little bit showering in northeastern areas. It's a cooler wind that we're bringing in with this height rise as well. Um, so temperatures do uh, lower. Then we bring up this low from the south. The other miles are not doing this, but you notice this low. This is Tuesday, midnight on Tuesday uh, next week. This low over Biscay. Uh, uh, that moves northwards as we go to midnight on Wednesday. So that could bring a deluge across parts of England and Wales if it comes off. But I think it's quite unlikely that that comes off. Most of the other model output does not show that. So I would suspect it's unlikely we get that low coming up from Biscay. But if it did move up, then it would bring us a, a cool and wet spell. Very wet spell across England and Wales through the middle of next week. That gets out of the way. I mean, it looks like we're starting to introduce more of an Atlantic flow right at the uh, very end. But we do have this little ridge building up from the southwest at day 10, which is the 18th of September. But I think, you know, with low pressure deepening to the south of Green, I think that ridge would get flattened off if we could go any further. And I suspect the ECM will go in the same direction as the GFS output and start to uh, bring autumnal westerlies uh, in, uh, you know, beyond day 10. So we might be starting to see the first hints of a breakdown to this prolonged, dry, high-pressure spell of weather that we've been in for several weeks now. We might be, but it is all a very long way out. It's beyond 10 days away. So I think we need to stay cautious about it for the time being. Uh, this would be precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometshow.com. So plenty of rain in the west at the moment, of course. Heavy showers and but there's always more showers breaking out in the south as well. And just generally seeing these showers and storms trundling northwards over the next uh, couple of days. So uh, that takes us into Saturday, for example, with lots of storms uh, across many parts of the country. 
more about that. It's still what she's seen him. Uh, into the rest of the weekend, it begins to turn a bit quieter, but still showers around. And then we bring up this deluge from the south around the middle of next week. So uh, look at that. That could be bring some really heavy rain across the England Wales in the middle of next week. But it is unlikely that that verifies. Into the more extended range, again, it's a little bit unsettled for northern and western areas, turning drier in the southeast, but possibly by daytime, as far as we get to, possibly just hinting we've got this rain and wind in the Atlantic, just waiting to start moving in and flattening off this ridge. These are just off webcam. Uh, so these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which will get us to the 18th of September. 24 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure in Scandinavia, low pressure just to our south, southwest, and also in the Atlantic. Looks like that's starting to turn a bit more unsettled uh, to day 10. That includes the uh, control run. We have uh, 10 members of the ECM ensembles, including the operational run, with this ridge building up from the southwest, but it's fighting off what is a deepening trough of low pressure in the North Atlantic around Greenland Ice. I think that's only going in one direction, which is unsettled. Now, nine here, much more anti cyclonic, high pressure over Scandinavia still maintaining those easterly winds so that's keeping the fine weather going and then the eight that we had here again with high pressure over scandinavia continuing to bring in those easterly uh winds there in two weeks time uh these are the options that we've got this will get us to the 23rd of uh september 21 members of the ecm ensemble still have that high pressure going on over and to the east of the country still bringing in those easterly winds. 11 have high pressure centred a little bit more to our west with lower pressure in over Scandinavia. That's going to be mainly dry. Uh, could be a bit cool though with winds in from a northwesterly direction. A 10 with quite deep low pressure across northern and western Europe. That's going to be really unsettled and autumnal. That's going in the same direction as the GFS operational runs, I suppose. Uh, 6 with high pressure uh, between Greenland and Scandinavia. Low pressure to our south and southeast. Again, winds are in from an east or northeast direction. Wettest in the south with that, driest in the north. Probably quite cool. And then three with high pressure right over top of the country. So it is inconclusive whether we're going to get Mr. Flip into autumn in the third week of uh, September. There's a few hints there, but it's all a very long way out. So uh, I think we need to stay cautious about it for the time being. Of course, eventually autumn will descend. It's got to, but uh, when it happens, um, you know, we need to wait uh, a, a lot longer, I think, uh, before we uh, start running off with the idea that autumn is coming in the third week of September. Right, uh, CFS V2 finally, and then we're done. So these are 500 millibar heights, break it down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 8th to 14th of September. The coming week will have above average heights, high pressure to our west and northwest. So a lot of dry weather to come. We will be turning cooler with winds in from a northeast direction. It's still warm, but it will, we will be seeing a, a drop in the temperature compared to the heat that we've got. Uh, at the moment. Uh, week 2 will be the 15th to 21st of September still with high pressure just to north country around the high we bring in these easterly winds so again lots of dry and, uh, and you would have thought relatively warm weather with that Quite a change for week uh, three, which is the 22nd, 28th of September, as a high pressure moves towards Greenland and Iceland, and we bring down quite a cool northerly wind, potentially. So that's still relatively dry, but is turning a lot cooler. And then week four will be the 29th of September to the 5th of October, with low pressure over to the east of the country now, high pressure out to our north and west, in the North Atlantic, going up towards Greenland. Around that, we bring in the wind from this uh, cool northerly or northeasterly direction. So, I mean, that turns increasingly cool and unsettled. That really is autumnal weather uh, by the very end of September and into the start of October. Right, if you enjoyed this video, then please can you smash the like button to make sure you're subscribed to our channel. You'll know, see future web content. If you do that, tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Thank you so much. And drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We've got to put on around 60 subscribers now, that's all, to get to 12k. So uh, the subs have moved quite quickly over the last couple of days. When we get to 12k, we are giving away 
the uh, Gavs, whether it's uh, Pillow, going to give away some merch. Two people will win, uh, will win a couple of pillows. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, we're going to do that and get 12K. We're going to put on around 60 subscribers now uh, to get to that. So exciting times, I think. Uh, and we'll wait and see how long it takes us to get 12K. It would be nice if we could do it this month, wouldn't it? But I, I don't know if we'll be able to or not, but it would be nice if we could. Right, so uh, that's it for today's video. We're not done quite by yet. Content, we're going to have Stormwatch coming up for you uh, tonight. So uh, that would be around 7-ish, I would have thought. But uh, for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.